Hi there, my name is Trinity French with Wired to Change. That's with the number two. I'm one half of the coaching duo with Mr. Mike Manning, who is on hiatus today, enjoying the lovely weather down in Dustin. Hopefully he's staying safe in this hurricane. And we are the business coaches that help you get your biz to the level you want so you can enjoy the life of a small business owner. And what a life it is. It's raining today. It's watering my sod, which is really good because I just got a bunch of sod laid and some of it was starting to die. And I'm having an awesome day because I'm back with our ultra special guest, Miss Micah, with Micah's Sweets and Treats. Hello, my dear. Hello, doll. And I sat through the entire last episode staring (laughs) at this cookie. One, it says inspire on it, which is super cute because mm-hmm. I love inspirational quotes and different memes and stuff like that. I post a lot of that. Um, and as we're chatting, you guys might hear me munching because I am eating this cookie, <laughs> even though I already had half a cookie today. Mm-hmm. Cannot wait. I think all three of those cookies are good for you guys. Teach and love is on yes. those too. And that's what you do for all we of your do. clients. Absolutely. We do love our clients. I had an amazing coaching call with one of our clients this morning. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Sometimes we're just better when we're on our own. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of the time, our clients really appreciate having the perspective of both of us. Absolutely. So last episode, we had a lot of fun talking about how you um, and Tesh got into business and then how you decided that you wanted to have something that was your own and you branched out and um, found not only something that you've learned to love, Mm -hmm. but also something that has really taken off like wildfire. Um, I know a lot of people that have purchased your cookie kits. Mm-hmm. Tell me about these cookie kits. What what are they and how do I find one? Oh, they're so fun. So cookie kits uh, were just a blessing uh, in the beginning of COVID. People uh, needed something very quickly to do with their kids to keep them entertained. Mm-hmm. And so cookie kits are a dozen or two dozen cookies that have been baked but they've not been decorated and oh. they are uh, they come in a box along with uh, a variety of colors depending upon what kind of cookies they are i can do disney themes i can do geo shapes i can do harry potter uh, and i provide the icing that matches that theme or if you say you know what i like the burgundy and gold on harry potter but i want mine to be green and black you're going to get green and black whatever Uh, sprinkles if that's part of the deal and instructions on how to do them and it's all put in a very nice little box and everything's sealed up for freshness and then I get those boxes to you as soon as possible when you order them so that you can start decorating them one or two at a time or all 12 at a time it doesn't matter to me just as long as you love them while you're doing yeah that sounds like a lot of fun it's a great time even for adults ask Mike Mike and Becky did some and uh, then he took a box to his uh, little grandson, and they did them down there in Charlotte, too. This cookie so. is so good. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying not to scarf it down. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell. It's one of the reasons why I, I really, uh, it drove me to do them is seeing all of these pretty cookies, but then you taste them, and they taste like cardboard. Yeah. They, or worse. Like the ones that I grab from starbucks and they're like yeah yeah i'm like did i really just pay four dollars for a piece of meh you really did you really did yeah so i stopped buying this i really wanted to i really wanted them to taste good oh and i don't want to forget i'm going to be creating two new flavors hopefully this weekend pumpkin spice Ooh. and i'm going to do a caramel apple oh i'm flavor. all about the caramel <laughs> apple that sounds so delicious you have to be my taste tester yes okay all right yeah, that's a deal i, I do i do like Pumpkin spice. Mm -hmm. Um, I do. I just made Scott buy me some pumpkin spice coffee. Cool. And it was delicious. Right. But the caramel apple. I've got the pumpkin spice nailed. But That that sounds like the jam right there. I've got to get it just right. So you'll be able to tell me. Perfect. Sounds like you'll be there. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Amazing. So you've you've had Micah's Sweets and Treats now for two years? I'd... Started baking cookies in 18. Okay. Yes. But you've been doing it like as an as a business. Since January. Since January. Mm-hmm. LLC it. 
Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. What would you say in the last then, oh my gosh, seven months? Dang, that went fast. It really did. Thanks, COVID, for making our lives <laughs> flip by in a blip. What would you say has been your greatest accomplishment so far with Micah's Sweets and Treats? Keeping it going. That's, I mean, it could have went either way, honestly. Yeah. Uh, especially, I know a lot of bakers, unfortunately, got sick, and they had to close. So keeping myself healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. Tash has been phenomenal. He's doing all of the deliveries for me, all of the grocery shopping. Uh, he's been, he goes to BJ's every day whenever I need my supplies for the cookies. And uh, that has saved me. That's the saving grace. And so I think, you know, follow up, follow up, follow up. And so I've been able with the newsletter to stay in front of people and, mm -hmm. you know, it's at grow some corporate accounts, uh, what I call corporate accounts and uh, reoccurring accounts. Uh, I recently was just um, added to the inventory at A to Z Pharmacy in Cary. I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah, they started carrying my cookies there. That's really cool. I'd like to have a couple more businesses that do that. She's enjoying the cookies and enjoying the the clients purchasing those along with their meds and things like that. So that's a lot of fun. Well, I can just imagine someone walking in there. They're picking up meds for maybe an aunt or grandparent or mm -hmm. even their significant other. And then they just see these adorable cookies and they're like, wouldn't that cheer them up? Absolutely. They're not feeling good. Here's an adorable cookie. It just goes together like peas and carrots. I love it. Yes. And she also hopes that, you know, when the kids come in to get the, uh, the flu vaccines or that sort of thing, mm -hmm. they'll, take a cookie home for their being a good sport getting the vaccine yeah we all we got were those stupid dum-dum pops <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i got anything so when covid hit mm -hmm. we talk a lot on the show about pivot and you know i feel like that's like the peewee herman word of the of the this half of the year pivot pivot mm-hmm what were some of the things that you had to do to pivot in either of your businesses? I just gave my B&I presentation on Wednesday, and one of the slides started at the beginning. The top was pivot, and how did we pivot in both of our businesses? So through you know, the you know 12 years that we were building IWP photography, it became very much more corporate events than it mm -hmm. was anything else. And that's the way we wanted it. Well, COVID took care of that. And so here we are working all of these years to not do certain things anymore. And now we're finding that we're having to do those again. Uh, so that's pivoting for the photography. Uh, the live event paintings actually kind of are in the same vein as a micro wedding if you think about it in the sense that there's not a lot that they can do there's not a lot of people and they still want something unique and timeless mm -hmm. no matter how many people are there mm -hmm. they want to capture that day so the live painting um has the interest has picked up i will say so that's, that's exciting awesome. But really where we pivoted to uh, with these businesses was actually the commission work. So in the beginning, when it was seriously, you know, we don't know how long this is going to go. Uh, we don't know how long people are going to have to work from home, that sort of thing. We had a lot of opportunity to create commission work for people who were deciding to decorate their their new offices in their new in their home, you know, and they wanted a nice piece of uh, artwork. And so that was really, that's really kind of where that business pivoted on its own. And I'm so thankful for it. Had it just been photography, I don't know what we would have done. I guess, you know, totally relied on Micah Sweets and Treats, but thank God it was there. But uh, so, but the commission work was really a blessing and that's really given Tesh a lot more exposure and he's able to build on that now. Uh, and uh, keep moving forward with that. Yeah. And now the photography is coming back, not per se in events, but there are other states that are doing events now, South Carolina and Virginia. So he's working in those states. 
He's got a live wedding painting this weekend in South Carolina. Really? He does, yes. Oh. I pray the rain goes away before it. It doesn't matter. They don't care if it's raining or sun shining. But for them, yeah, you know. I'm sure that they're just excited that they're having a wedding. Yes. Because I have a lot of friends that were supposed to be getting married mm-hmm. and have had to postpone their weddings or um, change up how they're getting married. And it yeah. has been... Yep. I'm so glad that we got our wedding in when we did, because mm. if I had had to have dealt with this and planning a wedding, I think that um, I might have lost my shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been very hard, and so then everything is moved to 2021, mm-hmm. and then but you we know, still don't know what's going to happen in 2021. Right. We don't, and so it's a lot of people are now deciding to just get married in the backyard or some hotels are opening and offering their uh, corporate boardrooms, smaller spaces and that sort of thing for weddings. So they can do a little something. So, yeah. uh, so that's that with the Micah sweets and treats in the beginning, the DIY kits were just, I can't tell you how many of those I did. And then in the middle of that, we were having, Easter. Easter was coming. So I did a lot of DIY kits for Easter. Mm-hmm. And and then as summer came, it slowed down a little bit because I guess people at that point, people were sick of being at home and they weren't going to stay at home. They were going to go to the beach. So I did get some of the DIY kits for beach trips or things like that. But then it picked back up, you know, end of July for just the DIY part of things. But now, you know, we're, you know, teacher appreciation and then uh, you know, fall cookies and that sort of thing. So it'll just I'm build so from here. Excited. I'm still sitting here excited about this caramel apple cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. You got my number on that All one. Right. I'm like, yes. All right. Um, how do you come up with those ideas? Do you just kind of think of a flavor and then play around with it no I'm not I'm not the scientist baker okay no I I really wish I was but I'm not Uh, I'll read about it I I I, uh the pumpkin spice you know everybody does pumpkin in the fall Mm -hmm. and so I picked up on that pretty quick uh but I don't create I wish I could I really do I think you know all the time I watch the the um the guys grocery games and you know they got to think up a meal and and i'm like in 15 minutes 20 minutes and i'm like i don't even i can't even i am (laughs) and i probably have more questions about baking than i should because um we're supposed to be talking about business but i'm like (laughs) tell me i am obsessed with the great british bake-off oh yes that show i could watch i mean if there were hundreds of episodes i would sit down and just binge all of them oh, i okay. love that show Do you? because so i'm not a baker i don't entirely enjoy baking because there's so much precision that goes into it mm-hmm. and if you are off just a little bit you get a completely different result you really do. versus cooking which you can kind of hodgepodge it together and still get something that's passable right. or something that's really good. Mm-hmm. So it just amazes me that these people are able to go and like whip out these cakes and these cookies and these, I don't even know what they call them in um, on that show because they have all these weird words for mm-hmm. cakes and cookies that I'm like, <laughs> what did they call it? A biscuit? <laughs> and they're making yes. all their biscuits, yes, which is really just a cookie. <laughs> and they do it in like under an hour. And it's just like, what? Mind mm. blown. Oh, I know. I know. Do you think you'd ever get on the point where you'd want to be on one of those shows? I don't know. I don't know. What Tash if someone's me. listening and they're like, ooh, we can get her on the show. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for TV. So it would be so fun. (laughs) What great Uh, exposure for the biz. One of the girls that I watch uh, and watch her cake videos and things on YouTube. YouTube's where it's at. I'm telling you, Uh, I'd probably have to have some sort of following on YouTube. Probably before anybody would care about having me on a TV show. So. But she has this huge following, and I saw her in a blip the other night while I was um, getting Ian to bed or something. She was cutting up a cake in a certain design for a Halloween deal, and she dropped it. Oh, I would have died. 
seriously, right there. But this is all made for TV. I yeah. gotta remember that. But but I'm I'm too much of a perfectionist. She probably had another cake. Like oh yeah, oh yeah. Tess sitting like, in the she wings. meant to do that, and I was like, what? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want you know. So you know, you don't want to drop a cake on TV. That's pretty bad for me. But I don't know. Who knows? Who knows where I'll end up? That would be amazing. It would be. I'm be I'm fun. team um, going on TV. Okay. I mean, why not? Why not? Even if you bombed, at least it's free publicity. On <laughs> You're on TV. <laughs> Bombing. <People. laughs> I mean, the fact that those people can even get anything to a judge oh, yeah. is amazing it to really me. Is. I mean, that's better. I mean, I wouldn't even get like my stuff in a mixing bowl before the time would be up. Right. And then I would be like, right. crap, here's my raw cookie dough. Enjoy. Have fun. <laughs> So as a woman in business, and I love having other strong women on the show Mm -hmm. because we have to band together. We do. Us ladies. Um, For someone, since you've successfully grown two businesses, which most people cannot say that. They um, may have one successful business or they've tried to start something and they, you know, bombed at it or... um, they're trying to get it going and it's not quite going or they have an idea and they want to get it started. What would you say is your top piece of advice for another woman that is on the cusp of wanting to start her own business? I think she has to accept that it will become her life. I know that there's all of these cute slogans about work for your business, not in your business or whatever that stuff is, you know, and you can't, you can't really at the beginning think about all of that. You have to commit to whatever it is that you're going to do. And you have to commit to doing the very best that you can do at it. You're not going to be perfect. Not everything is going to be perfect. It's how you handle that moving forward. If something should arise, that's going to put your name on the map. And I think it, it, it becomes for an, a personality person Uh, It can become overwhelming, and it can become too much, and you can check out. Mm -hmm. And I think the best advice at that point is to really evaluate what you want to do and if you want to move forward with it, because the last thing you want to do is check out and continue to work in that frame of mind. Right. So it, it is a huge commitment, and it becomes, it comes before, not becomes, but it comes before everything else if you want to really, be successful it really does and the, everybody has to be on board with that that and is in your you know our opening world. tagline is you know um we'll help you get your life to the level of a small business owner that you in and but we you know say it tongue-in-cheek because you have to put in so much effort in the beginning and it's like it's like compounding interest. The more you sacrifice early on, the faster that you gain the freedom that comes with being a small business owner. Absolutely. So if you want to go on fun vacations and spend more time with your family, then your first two years, you better be humping it and really focusing on growing that business to get it to that point. It could take longer than two years. I mean, we're having an event seems like every year that gets in the way of everything of everything an election a covid uh earthquake uh, i a mean hurricane, it's a forest <laughs> fire right. yeah you know I, so you have to be ready for that and sometimes you have to give more than you ever thought you had and sometimes it just doesn't work i mean how many times did uh, the chicken guy Colonel Sanders Mm -hmm. try businesses before. I mean, he was in his 60s before Kentucky Fried Chicken ever took Took off. Took off, right. So, you know, it's it. I think you have to be an entrepreneur in your heart. There are some, I had somebody say to me the other day, you know, I'm just a guy that works for the guy. And I'm good with that. Because I was like, what if you lose your job? What are you going to do? What do you like to do? You know, that's where you need to start. What do you enjoy doing? And mm-hmm. then turn it into a business. And then it's a win-win, right? And he's like, mm no, I'm not doing that. I'm the guy that works for the guy. And I was like, wow, okay. I guess I was never the guy that worked works for, the, for guy. the guy. No. I mean, I've been doing either, you know, direct marketing or uh, 
you know, something. And every time I look and think of, you know, what was the hardest parts of it all uh, in my uh, working past, my working history, uh, it was always when I was working for somebody else. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was just not me. I did not fit that mold. I did not either. Um, definitely was a, I don't know if burnout is even the right word, but it was very discouraging for me to work really hard and have a ceiling on what I could earn and to know that the more time and effort I put into something, um, I actually was making less money because I, you know, if you're on a salary and you work overtime, you're not getting paid anything extra. Mm-hmm. So being in a, a corporate job or working for, you know, the guy working for the guy that never worked for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to do it and paid my dues and put in the time and learned a lot. But the idea of going back to that is just mortifying. It's not I would, option. yeah, I would be just super unhappy. Yeah. But throughout coaching and recruiting, I quickly learned, I shouldn't say quickly, whatever. I didn't learn it quickly. It took me a really long time. And it took um, one of my mentors um, telling me to read a book. And I can't remember what the name of the book was. But basically, um, I used to get really frustrated at people who didn't have the same drive in the entrepreneurial spirit that I had. And I finally... They finally one day he kind of like slapped me upside the head with it. And he was like, not everybody wants to be a small business owner. Not mm-hmm. everybody has that drive. Not everybody wants to work that hard. That's true. Some people are just super content with, you know, being the guy that delivers the mail and getting their, pay, you know, their paycheck every week. And some people, mm-hmm. you know, and we need those people and we need people that are really good at that. Mm-hmm. I found myself managing uh, the North Hills Reed's Jewelry Store back in the day when North Hills was uh, still a mall, in a big mall, an indoor mall. Uh, I had gone through an armed robbery in July uh, in that store, and by November, the manager was gone. He cracked. He couldn't take it anymore. We were there together during the armed robbery, and he just lost it. He just had a new baby, and it just was too much. And so uh, I guess they couldn't find anybody better, so they <laughs> they promoted me <laughs> to manager. And I was literally working 90 hours a week to get ready for the holidays in that store. And I would need somebody to just come in five minutes early so that I could go get something to eat. Right. Just go get something. I'll bring it back. I just need to go across this, the hall and get something to eat and come back. I couldn't even get people to come in five minutes early. And it seemed like the more I bored holes through my eyes with my fake lasers at them, as they were walking into the store, they walked slower. (laughs) I mean, it was almost like, guys, do you even have a pulse? Yeah. And they were just there to collect their check. They just wanted their check. They just wanted their check and they just wanted to go home and they didn't care that they signed for a package of diamonds and left it on the on you know next to the trash can and somebody threw them out in the dumpster and I had to dumpster dive at eleven o'clock at night. I mean oh it just it, oh girls I got stories for days on this on that one but uh, yeah so it was just you know it, when you realize that people don't feel the same way that you do it's shocking. It it's is dumbfounding. It's, I it couldn't is. wrap my head around it. I know. And then. And they're looking at us like we're aliens. And that's because, why I cannot manage people. Because my expectations, it's just in me. It's of me. It's my nature. To take responsibility, yeah. make sure, sure things are done right, make sure things are done um, better each time, improving those things. I mean, those are the hallmarks of what makes us entrepreneurs. And when other people don't step up to the plate at that same level, it can be really frustrating. Really? And they're the ones that need to keep working for the man. Right. Because I'm free as a bird now. Yeah. Except now I have the bitchiest boss on the planet. (laughs) Myself. You are crazy. (laughs) Be nicer to yourself. Well, some days I really enjoy working for myself and other days like today I really wanted to take a nap and I was like, Perfect no, you don't you don't get to take a nap today. You just have to power through it. Mike yep. and I are big fans of naps. 
I'm a huge fan of naps. I know a lady who is like in her late 80s that looks like she's in her 60s. And she says, I take a nap every day and that's why I look the way I do. I was like, go girl. I'm a huge fan of naps. Well, if napping napping is going to keep me young, then I'm even more for it. It's better for your health. Really is. I mean, but I, I half of Europe is can't be <laughs> can't be wrong. <laughs> That's true. You know, look at those uh, French people who nap after lunch. Exactly. I love it. When I lived in Spain, it drove me freaking crazy because I would want to run my errands during siesta, oh. and everything was closed. So the bank would be closed. You know, like everything for two and a half hours was unavailable so I would just go to the beach and hang out and sounds terrible. it was a really rough life <laughs> college was really hard oh yeah <laughs> college in Spain I loved it I I'm think back jealous. to those moments and think but but this is something that you know once Ian's older and you have your little one out of the nest I mean you could bake cookies from and ship them from anywhere oh yeah Absolutely. Which is amazing. It is. Tesh could take pictures from anywhere. Yes. So you could go Gallivant live abroad. Around the world. Yeah, exactly. I There are days when I'm ready to go do that now. Mm-hmm. Get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> um, one of my um, favorite referral partners has a um, job where he coaches people how to start businesses in their RVs. Oh, my gosh. And it's always in the back of my mind, like, man, that would be so cool to just, like, work from my RV and go from park to park and, like, spend two weeks here and three weeks there and just kind of gallivant across the country. That is a whole world, girl. I mean, it is. we don't even Those know. Those people but are just, intense. They are. They have, like, I keep it's almost Tash. like a cult. Yes. I keep threatening him that we're going to do it. And he's like, yeah, right. You won't last a day in one of those things. <laughs> And I'm like, well, we'll park it close to a hotel. The only, yeah, the only <laughs> thing stopping me from wanting to live the RV life is that all the bathrooms are too small. I know. So I would rather have less sleeping room or something and have, like, a full-size shower. Well, that's where you design your own, baby. Yeah. For a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But then I get to, you know, drive around and see the countryside and... I don't I do really a, want to do, do a coaching call, do a coaching call from, yeah. you know, like Grand Canyon. How freaking cool would that be? That would be awesome. You can rent them. I'm just trying to get it one rented. I'm the one that I has could to drive call though. Mike and I, the new business, the coach's coach. Oh my God. How cool is that? Right? Yes. Yeah. Very cool. And then I, I'm sure I could get Becky on board and Scott and we could just be a little motorhome family. Who would drive yours? Scott. Okay. He yeah, would, I have to drive mine. Oh, you would? Yeah, and I don't know if I want to do that. Oh. Yeah. I can drive anything, but I don't know if I want to drive an R- RV. We got to try it out. We should check it out. I think we should. We should totally rent an RV, see well, how it feels. Nikki already has one. She can't. She d- I don't think she can drive, though. She pulls hers, right? She does. Uh, we are actually borrowing. Well, oh, nice. yes. Renting. She, no, she provided it for us for our anniversary. Oh, how sweet. She, she is an amazing human being. Oh, my God. I love her Just so much. We love you, Nikki Crow. You're amazing. So um, the weekend of our anniversary, they're setting up the camper for us, and we are having a dog-free um, weekend away. How fun. Where are you I going? I know. I don't know. Okay. I don't even know. I think maybe Jordan Lake. A lake. Maybe I don't a lake somewhere. Right. They they picked the campsite for us. They she was asking Fine. I saw her last night at a networking event. She was asking me what kind of snacks I wanted. I was like, <laughs> Girl, you are so over the top. Like I don't need any snacks, but maybe some of um some cookies. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to drop her a little note have after fun. this and be like, order me some of those anniversary cookies so I can frost them while we're... <laughs> That's fine. But she is absolutely just the sweetest. She and really I is. love her. But She really is. They would be great to go camping with. The, they we, would. The four of us, we should go. That would be and super Mike fun. Mike and Becky, you and your husband, Tesh and I. And yes. Tesh swears I'm never going to do anything. I don't like bugs. I don't do bugs, so that's going to be a problem, but we can work through it. 
we went camping uh, a couple times this year and we camped out for 10 days while we were in Michigan and I didn't see any bugs in our tent. Like we were just really good at keeping it closed and we tented like hardcore, like that's too much. I'm no air conditioning. Oh God, no. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I mean, why suffer? That it wasn't. Sounds- it just wasn't that bad. We would wake up in the morning when the tent got hot, Ugh. get up, and then by the afternoon, the tent was nice and cool because it was in the shade again, and then I'd go take a nap, and it was fantastic. Yeah, that's too rugged for me, girl. <laughs> no, no, I want it to be nice, and uh, I want it to be nice and uh, cool and no bugs, and I have a list. So if we can, I'm sure we can find that location. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Tash hears this. He's going to be shaking He's his gonna head. He's going to be like, all right, so no bugs, <laughs> nice temperature. Right. I don't want to be sweaty. He's going to say, we're going to have to find her a hotel, people. Yes. That's just all there is to it. Or just, you know, have enough cocktails to hey. make it so hey. that you're and not even. lakes either. So oh. Don't, yeah. No lakes? No, what about I a did. pool? Yes, pool. Pool? Okay. Yes. So maybe we go to a resort together and and try working from there and make sure they have really good Wi-Fi. Got it. That's perfect. (laughs) But you can't bake at a resort. I bet I could talk my way into their kitchen. Ooh, and then we could use all of their ovens. Yes, and then I could make all kinds of wonderful things. That would be amazing. Do you bake anything other than cookies? I do. Ooh, what have you ventured into? So I do cupcakes, a lot of different cupcakes, and I uh, can make chocolate cakes. I'm making one tonight. Uh, I am uh, really, really interested in adding French macaron to my menu. Uh, I just need to have the time. I don't have any time to add very much more. Uh, during the holidays, I make petty fours, and those start in at Thanksgiving. What's uh, a petty four? Oh, it's a bite-sized piece of cake that's covered in chocolate. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't get this way eating salad. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just telling you. I know you are I'm, preaching to the choir, and I'm like <laughs> salivating. I'm like cake covered in chocolate. Yes, done. Check yes. and check. Yep. So uh, it's an almond cake made with its own uh, almond paste and it's just it is quintessential holiday so i only make those uh thanksgiving and christmas you can find images of those on my facebook page and my Mm. instagram Mm. yummy so i already asked you this a little bit but i want to revisit it because you are in growth mode so with both businesses what would be the first thing that you would outsource so you can grow? So I am going to uh, look for someone to help me during the holiday season mm-hmm. uh, in the bakery. Uh, as far as the photography and art, uh, I would like to uh, get someone on board for marketing uh, that can help, which obviously they can do both. They mm-hmm. can cross over for both businesses. Yeah, uh, I think. Do I spend a ton of time on that? No, uh, Tesh does. He spends a lot of time uh, marketing the artwork and stuff, and uh, doesn't mind it. Doesn't complain. Uh, really, I would say there's not a ton that we need to outsource, but with the baking, uh, definitely need some extra hands during the holidays. Yeah, that's so. a lot. You can't just be not sleeping and. Or I could commit to that. (laughs) And I've thought about it. I've actually thought about it and said, you know, it really is only, you know, a 12-week period. I mean, there's worse things. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's like my accountant. He's like, all right, I just have to get through tax season. It's it's totally cool. I'm not going to sleep very much. And then then nice little recovery. Yeah, definitely. Until I call you up and I'm like, New Year's Eve cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am entertaining partnering with someone who's going to uh, bake certain things for me, like cakes and, and things like that. So oh, I'm nice. working on that right now. So, Ooh, yes. that's fun. Yeah. So uh, we're meeting very soon. Very cool. Yeah. And how did you find that person? Was she it, found me. She found you. Yes. Okay. And so she was actually looking for someone. She is a baker, mm-hmm. and uh, she bakes it all as well. 
And at the exact same time that I made the decision that I just think I'm going to stick to cookies. I think I've spread myself a little too thin. Mm-hmm. I need to bring it in, especially for the holidays. Yeah. And I need to, and I, this is all God, Trinity, because I yeah. don't know what, I'm just, I'm on autopilot. And I need to bring it in right now. She called me and said, I need to bring it in now, and I don't want to do cookies anymore. Can you do this order for me? Let's try it. Let's see how you do you know, let me taste one, you know, that kind of thing. So we went through all of that. And of course her client was thrilled with the cookies and she was like, we've got to meet and nail this down because this is a done deal. So she found me. So we'll figure everything out this weekend. So that's awesome. I'm really entertaining it. I hope that it works out. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, that would be great. What are the potential downfalls to starting a new business partnership like that? Personally, the downfall for me would be uh, it, mistakes, things not tasting like my customers expect it to mm-hmm. taste. That's the that's the kicker for me. And I don't know. I, it's you know I can give you things all day long, but it, the fun part is finding out how long it takes for me to take it back. You start laying bets on stuff like that mm-hmm. because I I can't give away the control, and it's not a bad thing. I'm not a control right. freak. I'm not ugly about it. But I have a certain way that I want people to 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 know about. I have a certain, you know, uh, quality, quality control. Thank you. Uh, that I want to uh, put out there, and I got to know that they're going to do that a hundred percent of the time. Like I said, stuff happens. I get it. Yeah. But uh, I got to know that she's in it. Salt to win instead it too. of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> but she seems to be. Uh, oh, I've got the funniest story. Can I tell the yes. story? So, gosh, three years ago now, I think it was. So, Tesha's birthday is Cinco de Mayo, and Ian's birthday is an exact week later. So, I thought, now this is three years, so this is pre Micah Sweets and Treats. This is pre Granny Colin needing her Louisiana cookies. Yep. I decided I was going to make a New York cheesecake for the two of them. My boy, he loves sweets better than anything else in the world. I I said that uh, my son is 50-50, my mom and dad. He loves to give orders, and he loves to eat sweets 24 hours a day. Uh, so uh, my mom was a sweet eater, man. She, My mom was chef material. She, was, she had no... Uh, professional education in it, but everything she cooked was, was just incredible. Delicious. Just yeah, yeah. Again, hence why I'm <laughs> I'm not a size the two. The anomaly. <laughs> I know I look like a size two, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, so uh, the uh, day came, and I get this cheesecake done, and I I cut it for them, and we've celebrated Tesh's birthday with a dinner, and now I've made this cheesecake. And I'm just, you know, I just think I'm just the bomb.com with this thing. And so I hand it to both of them on a, on a plate, beautiful plate, beautiful presentation. And they take this one bite and I'm, I'm like, this is it. This is going to show Tesh how much I love him. He is going to just never be able to get over this. And it's just going to dazzle him to a level that he never thought he could ever be. You know, I did yeah. all of these things rolling around my head. So he takes a bite and Ian takes a bite. And at the same time, they stop chewing. I'm watching them both. And I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes. They're just not going to be able to take it. They're just going to be like, that's it's the best so thing good. I have ever tasted. <laughs> and Tesh, it, was it Tesh or Ian? I can't remember. But somebody said, you forgot the sugar. <laughs> I said, what? And they were like, there's no sugar in this thing. I had forgotten to put the sugar in the cheese. Oh, no. <laughs> so it was a savory cheesecake, I found out later as I'm crying alone because I did not dazzle anyone. I really upset them that they couldn't have a really mm, nice cheesecake, cheesecake because I completely forgot the sugar. And I'll never forget, I was just devastated, beyond devastated. And I tried to give it away to my friends who are all healthy and 
skinny and yeah. all that stuff. And I called him up and I'm like, I have this cheesecake. It doesn't have any sugar in it. It's going to be perfect. And they called me back and they said, why would we eat that? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I had to throw the whole thing away. I'll never forget that. So Aww. I've not made that mistake since... Uh, becoming at a baker. At least you forgot the sugar and you didn't like add so, salt instead of sugar because I don't think that it would have made been, any difference. Yeah. So they were, oh. it was bad. It was, oh. uh, I don't know what you would, I, they serve in your British uh, baking show. Yes. They will serve a savory cheesecake, which I've never heard of uh, until this happened to me. But I think it's funny because it's all a bit of education. If it, I guarantee you, I may forget something one day, but it won't be sugar. Yeah. In your cookies. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about savory cheesecake and um, I'm sure. And what, what would you, yeah. What would you put with so it? So there's, a, you know, there's beef Wellington that you can, or not Wellington, but like beef tips and, and things like that. Something with a gravy would go over okay. it. And instead of a mashed potato or something, it, it would be the, the, on the side. Oh, you know, interesting. It is interesting. I kind of want to try it now. Okay. I'm, I wish I had one I, for you, but I don't. I will <laughs> maybe have Scott whip it up because I am not the cooker in the family. He no. is. <laughs> he cooks everything oh, for me. That's wonderful. I used to cook a lot before we started dating. Mm -hmm. And now I can't remember the last time I cooked. Lucky you. Yeah. So cool. he, he takes good care of me. Awesome. All right. And I realized that we, we got on a tangent, which is fantastic, but I do have... <laughs> One more question for you, all right. which is, how do you balance all of your worlds? I just do it. I don't plan it. I just go from one thing to the next and and just keep chugging yep. like a little duck, just what I legs do. going That's crazy right. under the water. Yep. Yep. That's what I do. I don't have time to think about it. I don't do things to do lists. I do like doing lists. Uh, when I do them, I do feel that accomplishment that people mm -hmm. say that you get and that sort of thing. But most of the time when I'm doing those things to-do lists, I think, dummy, you could be doing some of this if you stop writing, writing this crap letter. down and go doing it. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so that's kind of, I'm not a writer. I don't, yeah. I, you know, I don't write my journal and I don't, I don't do all, I wish I did. I'm sure that like you. Uh, you'll live longer than I do because your blood pressure probably goes down and it probably <laughs> helps you be a little bit healthier. Um, but I don't have, I, I don't, that's not my thing. So uh, I just do it. I, I've never known anything else except baptism by fire. Okay. So that's, well, I don't recommend it. I think they should do all the things you recommend that they do. Uh, but you being the coach, uh, me, I just, it's who I am. Just, Roll and roll and roll. Ha, I get it. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a good pun. Uh, Very good. We have to have some good puns. Well, let's tell our listeners where they can find you. I have been stalking your Instagram page, so you can go out and find Micah on Instagram and see pictures of all of her lovely sweets. Um, they look delicious. Thank you. Did you buy one of those like special setups to take pictures of your cookies? Mm -mm. No? No. 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 You didn't get, like, a little white screen or anything? You just do them in the kitchen? Tash does them for me most oh. of the time. Yeah. It must be really helpful having a photographer husband. It really does. It really does. I, I, That's one thing that I really hope to do better is take more stage shots and that sort of thing. But, again, it's just been I, I probably 40% of the cookies that I do I can't even get a photo of because I'm so busy working on them. And I get them in the box them up and, and get them and done. Get them done yeah. and get them gone. And I'm, then I'm like, dang it, I should have photographed those. <laughs> yes. But I'm I'm learning. It's, it's You just have to train the people that are opening them to tag you. Oh, yeah. As they eat them. Well, I do get a lot of the kiddos mm -hmm. that do the DIY kits. Oh. I ask the parents to send me photos, and then I post those for everybody because they're so much fun. That is so cute. Yeah, their decorations and them eating them and... I love the ones where they, I actually, someone sent me, I made a key lime pie and for a birthday and her little boy uh, was licking the plate and that Aww. was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. I was like, oh my gosh, wow. That's that a good cool. compliment. That is a good compliment. Well, where else can people find you? You are on Facebook. I am on Facebook. And Micah's Sweets and Treats dot com. Com. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Is that one S? Oh, there's like 14 in there. No, so. Micah's Sweets. So is it 
Micah's, Micah's with an S, and, and then, then sweets, sweets with an S, and, and treats with, with an S. S. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that was Ian's idea, y'all, not mine. <laughs> That's all right. I just want to make sure I that like people double, understand, double letters, so they evidently. can, so they can see. Yeah. And get yeah. out there and get um, and can they order straight from your website? They can order straight from my website. Fabulous. They can text me. They can order through Facebook or Instagram. Uh, if if it gets crazy, I'll cut that stuff off and they'll have to come directly through. But lots of fun things getting ready to happen with the website that I'm thinking about. So nice. Uh, just stick with me. I'm gonna grow. I'm going to yeah. have fun with this. You're going to have, gonna have, you're going to do amazing. And if you hit our Instagram page, I'm going to have some pictures posted of these awesome cookies that you brought me today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're My so cookie welcome. was delicious. And we are also on all the interweb spots. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on LinkedIn, or you could email us info at wired to change.com. That's with the number two. And we look forward to seeing you next time on our Wired to Change podcast.